More than a quarter of century has elapsed since the Philippines came under the American flag. An emblem of freedom, not of subjugation, a symbol of altruism, not of selfishness or greed. American sovereignty was implanted in a country with the avowed purpose of training us in the art of self-government and granting us independence. Our good, not her gain, was to be America's aim. A country was committed to her trust to be conserved and developed for the benefits of her people. Believing in the sincerities of America's purpose, the Filipinos applied themselves with patient diligence to the task, meeting the conditions exacted of them, anxiously awaiting the day when America would honor her promise. The first 20 years of civil government were marked by manual understanding and loyal cooperation between Americans and Filipinos. At the end of that period, when it seemed that the goal had finally been reached, after the President of the United States had advised the Congress that the time had come for America to fulfill her sacred pledge. The Filipino people expected that under his administration, the spirit of cooperation would be maintained, and that the work of political emancipation would be complete. Contrary, however, to our expectation, his conduct of government has been characterized by a train of disruption and arbitrary acts, resulting in the curtailment of our autonomy, the destruction of our constitutional system, and the reversal of America's Philippine policy. He has reversed the policy of Filipinizing the service of the government by appointing Americans, even when Filipinos of proven capacity were available. He has substituted his constitutional advisors for a group of military attaches without legal standing in the government and not responsible to the people. has endeavored, on the pretext of getting the government out of business, to dispose of all. The companies capitalized by the government worth many millions of the people's money to powerful American interest. Those were some of the lines from the petition letter that was written by our people in the span of Governor Wood's time in office. The petition letter is all about the joint resolution expressing the legislators discuss the way Governor Wood was running the affair of government. The person behind it and the circumstances surrounding it were highly political that would expect unpolitical bias and partisan interests that enable people to understand and become enlightened about what actually happened and how the repercussion of the governor has bought. The petition made on December 30, 1941, the oath was administered at the office of the President Kesson and Vice President Osmania for their second term. The petition letter was attributed by two leading lawyers at the time, Jose Abad Santos and George Bocobo. Some of the issues that has been raised are partly true, but were blown out in portion in order to discredit the Wood administration, but Wood admitted on his diary that the current case was only a pretext and the request of his falling out. To the Filipino politician was his refusal to let Kesson run the government. The cabinet crisis at Lewis Glick Park was provoked by Kesson, was at the time was desperately in need of an election, issue that he could use in his political campaign. They also characterized Wood as an arbitrary, oppressive, and undemocratic. They are issuing it to appeal to the judgment and conscience of the American people to support their stand and uphold their political rights. <laughs>